Are we unmuted? We are unmuted. Welcome, everyone. What Hello. What is going on? Oh. Well done, by the way. We're all set up here. Yeah, so for those of y'all listening to the audio form or watching this on YouTube, we now are doing Magical Theory Podcast live on the internet. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash wizardphd. It's basically SNL, but... No, we're not changing into costumes it's, and sets and all. This. It's SML Although now, Sunday morning. Life. Now you're making me like, oh wait, we should no. Okay, it'd be like what? Constance and we can do like a Wizards Rimbali. Unite live. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's what's going on. We okay. It's not too bad. Our last episode mm -hmm. was in March. Uh huh. Yeah. End of March. Ago. End of March. So. It's only been a few well, months. Not, I don't know if you know this, but the past year has been difficult on some people. <laughs> the past year has been difficult. Possibly I, all people. I, I, I may have uh, experienced that as well. Quite possibly all people everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So we did a lot of things, but this sl you know, slid down just a little bit. We were finding space for other things, but we're really excited, I think, to bring it back. And we were brainstorming yeah. like our style and how to do it. And yeah, here we are. Yeah. We are here. Um, also, so be are we here? Because we're live. Well, right. I was gonna say because we're live, there are also people in the chat. So I just yes, wanted to say that you, if you watch us live, you may get a shout out or question or topic contributing yeah, we'll to yeah, our discussion. We'll, well, we're gonna continue we'll our flow. regular discussion as we normally regularly do. scheduled programming. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Anything else you wanna? Chat about you ready? I'm ready. Juan's, <gasps> Juan's ready. ready. Let's right, go. Let's set this down. Yeah. Also, we have Winston on the couch. So okay. <laughs> so turn to page three thirty-two. This is Prisoner of Azkaban. Prisoner by the way. of Azkaban. Three thirty-two. Cat, rat, and dog. Today's lesson is called Hate, Fate, and Fog. I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> A synopsis. The chapter begins with our trio coping with Buckbeak's execution and the surprising return of Scabbers. Mm. Just as they are trying to return to the castle, however, Crookshanks appears and harasses Scabbers, who struggles to escape Ron's grip. <laughs> a massive dog arrives and also lunges after Ron, pulling him and Scabbers into the Whomping Willow. Crookshanks helps Harry and Hermione by subduing the tree and allowing them to follow after the dog. After passing through a long tunnel, they arrive in the Shrieking Shack to find that the dog was actually Sirius Black. Dun, dun, dun. No spoilers. <laughs> Weakened and delirious, Sirius still manages to disarm Harry and Hermione, but fails to defend himself from Harry simply physically attacking him. Eventually, a disarmed Sirius lies helplessly, with Crookshanks guarding him. Harry precariously hangs on the edge of murder before oh, Professor gosh. Lupin arrives. In only a few moments, however, our trio is shocked to see that Lupin, a werewolf, lifts Sirius up and embraces him. Harry is shocked and furious, but Lupin manages to begin revealing the truth of what has been happening, finally claiming that Scavers is in fact Peter Pettigrew. No spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> So I literally, I, I don't know if I've said this in any of our previous Prisoner of Azkaban episodes. I don't mm. remember reading this for the first time. Like, I am I feel like my reaction right now, I mean, okay, to be fair, I've only read this book once in my life. I've seen the m movie many, many times. But mm. I feel like my reaction feels like a first time read, even though I know the story and I have read this text before. But yeah, it's been a while for me, too. I think what sticks out to me, and I'm sure we're going to circle back on this was just how um, dark the inner monologue for Harry was. Yeah. I kind of forgot because I think more recently we've watched the movie several times since yes. I've read the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this scene is is slightly different no. in some significant ways. Well, you're like like the whole, you know, the, the narration is like the inner of Harry's mind. Mm -hmm. And I feel like... Uh, well, since you brought it up, that was actually the quote that I, I that I wrote down. Okay, so this is after. Um, so I'll just read the full thing. It's it's actually a few sen sentences. The taunt about his father rang in Harry's ears as though Black had bellowed it. A boiling hate erupted in Harry's chest, leaving no place for fear. 
for the first time in his life, he wanted his wand back in his hand, not to defend himself, but to attack, dot, 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 to kill. Like, I wrote, I just wrote, um, in all caps. (laughs) Like, uh, It's very aggressive. (laughs) Wait. His, yes, he is very, it's a different Harry. So it's well, oh it's well gosh. stated that that yeah is really well stated of just like his his attitude is so different from how we've seen him before. Yeah, in the first two books in particular, but even most of this book, he's like, I guess okay. Now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm thinking about the movie scene uh-huh. where Harry tells Ron and Hermione that like Black betrayed his parents. It's like I'm gonna kill him. But okay. this was somehow, for me, well, it was much more real because he wasn't just like, you know, like with mad with his friends. I mean, like, I'm going to kill him. He was right, like, right. one Well, pointed. so yeah, yeah. So th- what happens after is that he actually, he like has his wand dead serious. That's and what he's I'm saying. Like, and it was... it's just like Crookshanks, because we, we briefly said this this morning, Crookshanks was just like a little baby protector. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so intense. Like, are you going to murder Hermione's cat? Because mm-hmm. that's what he said. He's like, if I had to kill Crookshanks, yep, then I know. oh well. I know. Very dark. <laughs> it got and then dark fast. As soon as like uh, Lupin comes out up and he's just like, Oh, I missed yeah. my chance. The whole thing is yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Harry. Yeah. Um, can we back up for yeah, please. the yeah. ba- Buckbeak? Uh so I just wrote, so we hate the Malfoys, right? We 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 despise the Malfoys, right? We do, me, yes. I was actually looking back at uh, your description for the last chapter, mm. and the way you wrote it in the synopsis was uh, Buckbeak apparently had been executed, or you, you wrote that word, and it really made me think about D and D of uh, the choice of words that a DM uses mm. that opens up space, but also immediately is like everything is sus. Wait, <laughs> wait, is this is is, is Buckbeak really dead? I guess yeah, we'll no. find out. I guess it's a yeah that's a really good kind of device as well because okay we're spoiled yeah but if you and I can't recreate the first time that I read the story Mm -hmm. I have to imagine that I thought Buckbeak was dead why would I not yeah there's no reason not to yeah yeah well I'm also rereading um we we've mentioned this before there there's still a major thread mm. that has not come up yet yeah right and it and it's just hints. it's funny because yeah it's just hints and then um re- like right now it's kind of like i if i didn't know then i would have completely forgotten about those hints at this point because it's all about serious it's all about the dog it's all 100%. about like all sort of oh my gosh S- similar to chamber of secrets with Ginny. Uh-huh. Where it's like there's all these hints. And, and in retrospect, I mean, especially the second read through, because I agree, I would have forgotten as well. Yeah. So I imagine little Jeff <laughs> being like reading the second book, for example, and like getting to the end and being like, wait, Ginny, what? And yeah. Then like going, and then yeah. kind of flipping back through and being like, where are some Ginny scenes, right? <laughs> she, yeah. I mean, J.K. Rowling is really good at that, right? I mean, she writes mysteries. These are yeah. mysteries, mm-hmm. ultimately. And like each mystery is laid out in a way oh, where yeah. like there are good hints mixed around with just like everyday life. Yeah. So it's really hard to tell. Well, so the other thing, because we were also discussing this last night, I try not to tell Jeff what I'm what I'm doing or yeah, thinking right. about, but you it's were really like hard. And, yeah. you're like, and then you stop talking. Yeah. But um We'll we'll see this, I think, in the following chapters, plural maybe, but um, the the reveal at the end that Peter Pettigrew is mm. actually Scabbers, mm-hmm. there were like little things throughout as well. Sure. And or things that were going on behind the scenes that that like why? I mean, OK, Crookshanks, Crookshanks is a cat. Mm-hmm. I would I, I have lots of things. Actually, I wrote notes about pets. That's mm-hmm. that's what I did research on. Um I guess cats chase rats. I don't know. I don't know anything sure. about cats. Cats and <laughs> like, mice. But Tom I was I was thinking though because because um and I actually had to go back and look specifically at the letter cuz like the letter's like, "Oh, you can bring a pet." And the pet 
the pet options it says owl cat or toad that's all it says whatever we're gonna we're gonna just like because there are actually discussion forums where people are asking like wait why does ron have a rat why does and so i wanted to read yeah the pets okay. out loud to you the pets that i found um across the series so so far we know harry has an owl yep named hedwig hermione yes. has a cat named crickshanks Ron has scabbers or had scabbers, the rat, which I don't know what, because he had scabbers in the first year, right? Because people were discussing like maybe it's just a first year rule and like older years can take. I'm pretty sure Ron had scabbers the whole time, but I don't know. Maybe I'm making this up. Um, Neville had Trevor, the toad. Sure. Uh, Lavender had Blinky, the rabbit, but I think that was at home. Mm. I think, remember, because that was what she was crying about, that her rabbit died yeah, and right. that Trelawney predicted right. it, it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that one was at home. I don't think it was actually at Hogwarts. Uh, and then if we're going, like, in the future, because I think these are future reveals, we have, or should I talk about future? Yeah. Okay. Ginny, you know Ginny's pet? Yeah, it's the, it's the pygmy pet. It is. You know its name? Hold on. It's a <laughs> hilarious name. It's like, oh, my gosh. Because it's just like a simple name. I'm stuck. My Right now, my brain has fixated <laughs> on Arthur, but that's obviously her dad. I, what is it? Arnold. Arnold. It's oh, so, close. so close. It was so close. Okay. That was, a, right. good <laughs> that was a good connection. It was such a good connection. Potter guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we also have Percy. Percy had an owl. You know Percy's owl's name? Now this is turning into a trivia segment of Magical Theory Podcast. No, you asked me this one because Ron asked to borrow I didn't know him, this, think, by the but way. I can't remember. Hermes. Hermes. Okay. Hermes. Okay. Um, and then these are, I put like little asterisks by it because they're like teachers or adults. They're not the kids, but mm -hmm. uh, Slughorn has a pet. Really? A pet fish. Oh, named Francis. Francis. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, this is Francis is dead. Yeah, based on the the website that I was looking at, it was it was actually ranking all the pets in Harry Potter, so um, you could like vote. I'm ranking. <laughs> yeah, no, that seems necessary. Uh, spoiler alert for that. Scabbers uh, was number one. It was last. No, Scabbers was last. It was just an, like a middle aged man. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, Mrs. Norris for Phil. Sure, of course. Yeah. Um, well, actually, Fox was listed as a pet for Dumbledore, and I kind of like reacted to that i was like fox is not just a pet i don't know why i reacted in that way but hey. i just i don't, I don't know I, I felt i had a weird reaction nah, there to that. Scabbers. Uh, <laughs> well ron doesn't know that uh matey is aberforth's goat goat i don't know hmm. and then there were too many in the list but literally all of hagrid's pets <laughs> Aragog, Fang, uh, Fluffy, I like literally every animal that Hagrid, Norbert. Buckbeak. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, good job, Draco and Lucius. Y'all murdered Hagrid's pet. It's who... just so aggressive. <laughs> uh, oh, and then Pigwidgeon, eventually. Pig, yes. For, mm -hmm. for Ron mm -hmm. as well. But yeah, I was just, there were many thoughts. I was like fixated on the pet thing. One, because I was like, it's kind of hilarious to me that if you're telling all of your students you can bring a pet. Like, okay, so... Because another comment... It's good to be able to magic away, you know, <laughs> pet stool. Well, and a comment was that potentially the three pets listed were pets that the school would help take care of. Like the Owlery or uh, I perhaps... See. I don't even know cats. Maybe there's a cat hall. I don't know. <laughs> They're just in the hall. <laughs> uh, no idea. But... Uh, yeah, I was imagining all of these pets like in the the houses, like in the dorms. Like, what? What? <laughs> What's happening? Just like you have all these students and all these pets. And then I was also at the same time. Sounds like a good time to me. I was thinking about no like dogs, though. Ron's. So again, like okay, you know how people say I'm a dog person or I'm a cat sure, person sure, or whatever. Yeah. Like I'm clearly a dog person. Like mm -hmm. cats are fine, but I'm not like oh my gosh, I know because I just said I don't know anything about cats. But yeah, you freak out about dogs. I, I love dogs. Any picture of a dog, I'm just like, look at this little baby. But um, I was thinking about Ron's like affection toward a rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I, you know, I guess, it's interesting that you bring that up because I, I feel like it has to do with Ron 
it has to do with Ron's backstory and being relatively in poverty, right? So it's an ownership piece, I think, because uh, the she yeah. J.K. Rowling, well, because he also takes care of the line it. of how like yes, Ron. Ron has the sort of love-hate relationship that you would expect where he's like, he's kind of annoyed by Scabbers, but if anyone else criticizes Scabbers, he will defend yeah, Scabbers yeah, yeah. until he finds out that Scabbers is a middle-aged man, <laughs> <laughs> which it always has gotten me. So it just, it just, there's something about it that is so creepy. It's so dark. It's so dark. This man has lived as a rat with this family, including with little children yeah for years yep and they, they love him take care of him and it's just like yeah, it's yeah. insane just a little rat it's a wild <laughs> it's a wild it's a wild story mind you. oh my goodness yeah uh we didn't talk about the whomping willow yet holy actually that took <laughs> that that was fun rereading it because when harry was like he got smashed over the head i was like wait what is what is hitting him i thought it was like maybe no a person i or i something. knew that they were going to the yeah. shrieking shack so i was like mm-hmm. oh no oh no like something bad's about to happen but yeah bonk 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 um yeah, so that was that was like super intense. So okay, I'm also trying to like okay, perspective shifting. Thinking about Harry's perspective, your best friend is getting dragged by your nightmare dog that keeps following yeah, it's you bad news. into a tunnel. Because I, you know, just because Harry's seeing the grim doesn't mean that he's gonna die. <laughs> Could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It. I mean, everything about this chapter is really intense. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've just gone from like knowing an innocent animal has been executed witnessing part of it yep to rediscovering your like missing rat to (laughs) just this series of events that happened so quickly well i didn't realize ron broke his leg like he legitimately broke his leg yeah Yeah. was that in the movie well it's like very what happened in the movie i don't even i feel like i need to rewatch we need to do a watch party of prisoner Mm -hmm. basketball like in the discord or something Mm because i don't remember this scene that vividly i remember when Sirius is talking. Like I remember that, but like leading up to that point is come so out, <laughs> fuzzy to me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So yes. So I think like Ron collects scabbers because Crookshanks isn't a part of the scene. I don't believe mm. Ron collects scabbers and then sees Sirius like kind of above Harry and Hermione behind them on a hill. And then Sirius runs between them and jumps at Ron and knocks him down and then drags him into the tree. It happens in my opinion a little quicker. I guess I vaguely remember. Okay, okay. It's it's coming back to Yeah. yeah. A little bit. A little bit. (laughs) If I'm remembering correctly for the movie, I don't even know that Crookshanks really is a plot point. There's a scene or two where... Well, Crookshanks He's chases chasing yeah. the rat. I but... love how Crookshanks and Sirius are BFFs. Yeah. I just think it's so cute. It's just like, oh, a cat and a dog. Cat Speaking dog. of BFFs, huh? Lupin and Sirius. Oh, man. Like, okay, this whole, I think it's because, like, it's hard to put myself not knowing because I know, like, I know the answer. I already know everything. <laughs> so, like, they're hugging, like, this seems like it's so drawn out. Right. Because I know, like, okay, just get to it. Like, just tell Harry. So I was like, I wrote in my notes, like, okay, serious. Now is not a time for cryptic monologuing. Like, <laughs> Yes, that's why I put in the synopsis deliriousness. Because uh, I yeah. think he is so euphoric uh-huh. at the fact that he has finally isolated Peter Pettigrew. Mm-hmm. Okay, not fully isolated, but he's he is... He feels, I think he's about to get revenge of however many years, 13 years of worth of revenge to go, yeah, I guess, to go and destroy. Was it Lupin or Sirius that waved Harry up, like trying to explain? Because it's, I imagine it's like, you're, yeah, so that makes sense. So you're finally, after years, like going to get this And he's talking moment. to Harry. And then you I keep think, getting asked questions yeah. and he's just like, I can't, can't answer it right now, yeah. you know? He's been so one track minded. <laughs> uh-huh. Because there's even a moment, I, I believe, in the book, if I'm remembering, mm, Harry says something to Sirius that snaps him just for a second. 
Mm-hmm. Like J.K. Rowling says something about how like Sirius's eyes kind of he kind of like blink. Well, like I pictured I it as one it of those where when he, like, he said kind of the first time he said recoils. you killed my parents or yeah something some, like that. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, it was. It, it stuck out to me as some somehow like it was a touch of humanity that Sirius hadn't had in so long. Yeah. Right. It. Yeah, there's a. Um, I mean. Without, without like, getting more, um, especially from the reader's perspective at this point, like, you don't know who this serious guy is except for all of the newspaper thing. Like, from the very beginning, it's like, this guy's a murderer. He wants to kill Harry Potter, blah, blah, blah. Um, Hermione, all of them are freaking out. Hermione reveals that she knew Lupin was a werewolf yeah, this whole time. Yeah, and Ron takes a dark turn immediately. Where he's just like, get away from me, werewolf. Yes. Okay. That was that's that exchange made me feel so <laughs> bad because I was like, oh this is God. very ugly. Yeah. It's really ugly. Oh man. Yeah. Because they feel betrayed. Yeah. And so they lash out like in the way that hurts Lupin the most. It's a yeah. very human thing, right? I, mm-hmm. Where like, if you spiral with negative emotion, like you often exercise, or at least I've found like. People will exercise the knife that they've had hidden and they'll dig, they'll put it like right in the most painful spot of the person that they know, yeah. of people that they know well. Yeah. Right? Of like, what is their weakness? What are their sort of um, psychoses that like really hurt them? Yeah, yeah. his name is Remus. Of course he's Remus terrible. Lupin is, yes, it's not, you know, it's not. It's not subtle. Not throwing us off the track. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it it is fun. I mean, and okay, it also somewhat annoys me that Lupin like speaks in riddles. Like I think, but I, I think Lupin and Sirius are both for different reasons are in, in such mm. an emotional state. And so yeah. is Harry. Yeah. So all five of our people are just like, yeah, they're like not they're, actually talking to everything each other. is so they're complicated. All just yeah. like, <laughs> Cause like Hermione is like really frustrated and sort of like, yeah, I trusted you. And then like Ron has been bitten. He's bleeding out. <laughs> And Harry's just losing it. He wants to kill him. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it's a really intense scene. It really is. Because even Lupin, like, Lupin has been such a good teacher the whole book. And then yeah, in the critical yeah. moment, he's like, oh, one well, out of three or something. And it's like, just just tell the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just like, tell this them. is not the time Ser- for just all Just be like, games. Sirius didn't kill your, didn't betray your parents. <laughs> the rat is... Peter Pettigrew, get away from him. Yeah. And like, Do y'all I know feel this? like... Oh, gosh. You have these these teenagers Don't who come are... in and hug Sears. But again, it's the yeah, emotion. Yeah, it's yeah. very real. Yes. It's like, this is a man that Lupin was very good friends with and thinks did betray their yeah. other very good friend and Peter Pettigrew killed them. Yeah. And then he's just, fu- he's just put together that that was not true. Well, and again, so we have, from Harry's perspective... First year, you had Quirrell who tried to murder you because Voldemort was in the back of his head. Second yeah. year, you had Lockhart, who is also, you know, not that great. Mm-hmm. Uh, not who he says he is. Here you go. Three years in a row. Now we have Lupin. And I, I don't know. Harry's probably not thinking about that right now, but I was thinking about that. But I want, like, I, yes. And I think like, yes. <laughs> and I think like trying to embody a, any particular character in this scene is really useful like why are they not acting we as sort of observers it's like oh lupin like you could clear this up so quickly so could serious mm-hmm. but like why are you especially lupin who has the trust of the kids mm-hmm. like why can't he be coherent and quick and concise and i think it's because like this is an overwhelming night for him it's yeah. overwhelming. Not only does he know Peter Pettigrew is alive, but he knows that Pettigrew is the, that he probably has mourned him for 12 years, the loss of his friend, and has grief over Sirius. I mean, it just, it must be such an intense wave. Oh, yeah. So there is the whole, like, the reveal also that, because uh, Harry was like, the map, the Marauder's map, mm-hmm. and he's like, Oh, yeah, yeah. made it. You, Or you know how to use it? I made it. Yeah. And it's just, there's like so much. That, so if you're much. Harry, you're just like, what? Information <laughs> overload for what? sure. This, none of this makes sense. It's very hard to process. None of yeah. this makes and sense. And then like uh, the thing that gets this, I mean, the line that punches me in the gut is when there's the cryptic question that Lupin asks Sirius and he's like, 
Unless you change, unless you kept it a secret even from me or whatever, the oh, fact that they changed yeah, I who glossed the over that. keeper was. Yeah, I glossed over and that And Sirius part. just kind of like nods very solemnly mm. because mm. It, it'll come out in the next couple of chapters like what the strategy was and the strategy feels sound. Like mm-hmm. you can tell for me, it's like, oh, I understand. Like, yeah, like Voldemort studied the Potters, knows that James would probably trust Sirius. Yeah. And Sirius, know, right? It's a game theory. Sirius knows that. And so they make this other decision fatally. Right? Yeah. So we have this also this like generational. We briefly have talked about generational um, experiences or perspectives. And so like Lupin and um, Sirius and Pettigrew, like all these people that went through an entire first wizarding war and mm-hmm. all of this mm-hmm. stuff all this history and then you have this new generation of kid, like literally the kids from their generation not knowing not understanding all of that but it's still connected to what's impacting them right now and it's so complicated because there's like all like you can't possibly catch them all up to like everything that's happened or like make them understand especially because all of this has been like secret and like undercover and like uh, years of waiting and all of this other stuff, but it's all linked to Voldemort. <laughs> it's all linked to Voldemort. And in my mind, I was just playing through this this kind of juxtaposition, which is we will find out. So in this book, we learn essentially that people thought Sirius betrayed the order mm-hmm. for Voldemort, but he didn't. Later we will find out that Sirius's brother betrays Voldemort in some serious yeah. way, which is also fascinating. I've right? been, I've been, uh, wait, did I, when did I reread that? I don't know. Was that for a book club, last yeah. book club? Uh, but also watching the movie over and right. over. Yeah. And, and like, I mean, job, that's, Winnie. it's Winnie's movie. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it switches, it switches. But yeah, it's uh, this, the, the connections and like all of this web is, it's just starting to be it's revealed. really great yeah it really is yeah these books really hold up for me obviously i love them but yeah. like when i get back into the story and even like getting to this detail i'm still like this is so good mm-hmm. the way that things are put together is really really good yeah. yeah yeah it's just very compelling and very it's very real i mean like the decisions the what the consequences and then like the emotion, like people can't just communicate perfectly. They never do right, ever right. in real. But we sometimes I think we expect books, book yeah, characters yeah. to be like, oh, you know, just, yeah. just figure it out, right? Or something like that. Yeah, I feel like um, because these characters are so, they have human aspects like fleshed out fully mm-hmm. in unique ways. Like that's what makes this um, series really connect with people like because because it's frustrating because you have these range this range of emotions and like it's really difficult to one dimensionalize people Mm -hmm. like uh, I mean I know that there's critique because also well I was like I I, uh, get a lot of like Harry Potter stuff on my Twitter timeline of course and so Mm -hmm. (laughs) like of course there's critique like nothing is perfect but you like the appreciation for the complexity of not just like the interpersonal dynamics, but of like the character individually themselves is yeah. really well done. I'm never looking for perfection. Yeah. I want interesting and and intriguing, mm-hmm. inspiring, like anything like that. And so these books really do it for me, especially like just it's very um, relatable. Mm-hmm. Like almost every character, I know that person. Like mm-hmm. I, we... I know them, I've seen them and I've interacted with them and I have a sense of like how they how they are and it makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of internal consistency and growth in the characters. I mean, even down to Draco, who I frankly do not like at all and I don't find him <laughs> redeemed, but I definitely recognize an interesting arc. Yeah. And so it's like it's very fascinating to, yeah. to look at those arcs. Same with Snape, right? As yeah, it, you don't you don't have to like everyone. They're whole people, but you can yes. yeah you can appreciate that they are whole people and and flawed and yeah. redeeming and uh, complicated. Yeah, just ultimately complicated. <laughs> it is also 
there's some chat about he, being teenagers. Yeah, it is yeah. real, and she does a really good job at writing teenagers as full people. Yes, who yeah. are experiencing some intensities that they may not have experienced just yet. Yeah, but they're prepared for it in the sense of like it's not like they're emotionally stunted and unable right. to confront these things. Yes, it's just that they may be like. They don't have necessarily, I mean, let's be honest, the things that happen to Harry don't really happen to other people. (laughs) So it's not like they would be well prepared either. Because we can see that even to pull it, to circle it back. Like Lupin isn't well prepared for this scenario. He's like, what in the world is going on? Yeah. It's madness. Yeah. This whole world is out of control. (laughs) It's out of control. Take humans, add magic. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) It's going to go wild. Yeah. Uh, Was there anything else that you wanted to bring up? Uh, No, I mean, it was actually a a relatively short chapter because I actually thought that the the following scene where Snape is going to come in, I thought that was going to be this chapter, but it's obviously next chapter. Yeah. So that'll be intense too because I was like, oh, this is going to be like, this is going to be intense like because it's, not only the the storyline. So then rereading it and seeing where she ended the chapter, I was like, okay, good choice. Because mm-hmm. otherwise the chapter would be just, there's too much happening. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to comment on your title? I mean, it's it's a very nice uh, parallel to Cat, Rat, and Dog, Hate, Fate, It did, it did my best. Yeah, I yeah, was just thinking yeah. about like the fog, for Fog was the one that was tough because there's yeah, yeah, actually yeah. not that many words that rhyme I know, with I was like, I can see the hate, I can see the fate. Yeah, well, and so those aren't direct rhymes, but I was, yeah. So Fog, <laughs> I was saying like that people don't know things. Uh, like the unknown. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was, that's Very what I was nice. going for. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Great chapter though. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. Lots of love for Lupin. Lots of love for Lupin. Yeah, he is such a good character, man. Yeah. He's the he is the character for me that's most like Harry. Mm. They are the most si- when I think about Harry, the person that I think is most similar to him is Lupin. Mm. In kind of like they have a lot of baggage a lot of things have happened to them i mean if you think about lupin's life we just saw a scene where it's like these are all three of his best friends one he thought betrayed the other two and their other two are dead and he's a werewolf and he's only like 40 yeah yeah (laughs) and it's like holy cow okay so now i'm thinking about i know i brought up lupin but now i'm thinking about Sirius, and i'm thinking about the end yeah of this story with yeah, this book. with no with serious mm. serious hairy relationship and that mm. like oh starting with like i'm gonna murder <laughs> this guy i'm gonna kill you to you know like yeah. where it ends up so yeah it's wow. super intense <laughs> <laughs> it's a really intense yeah it's very good oh but that's it yeah no i don't have anything else all right well, thanks for uh, hanging out with us. For yeah, Match thanks the for Theory listening. Alive and First for live watching, one. rewatching on the VOD or the podcast. Um, you can subscribe to us on any podcast platform. You can subscribe on YouTube and get episodes. You can follow on Twitch and see us every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Until next time. Wands ready. ready.